Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to talk about some changes to Dwarf Combat. You see, with Update 5.0 there was a radical change to the Dwarves. We talked about this a few days ago in the rework, but yeah, there's some big combat changes that we didn't talk about. Mostly because I thought, well, that's going to be covered mostly by the MP players, you know, that's the big thing for them. It does seem a majority of these changes are campaign exclusive though, so why not discuss it ourselves? You know, we're all campaign players here. As you've been able to see, the tech tree has a bunch of different effects, attributes and so on, which will be attached to certain units of yours as you start progressing through your campaign. And this is really interesting because, well, first up, we're getting formations back, which a lot of people were asking for. There's been some changes to how certain units, like for example flame cannons work, and also, well, some very big changes to gyrocopters and gyro bombers. So yeah, let's discuss all these new things. Check them out in action because some of them are pretty cool, some of them are a bit weird and uh, there is a bug which I believe has actually been fixed because I have seen a lot of people reporting on an issue which recording this footage today um, does not exist. So with attack you'll be able to get shield wall with the dwarf warriors and your long beards. This is a formation for your dwarfs which will give them extra mass, extra missile block chance and also missile resistance. The only thing is you can't run, but then again you're playing as a dwarf, and you can't put this on when you are in melee combat. Putting the formation on in pre-battle doesn't really do anything in terms of visuals, but if you do it when the battle has started, there is animation where the front line will put the shield up and the back line will put all their shields facing to the sky. This is with both the units, it's pretty damn cool, I'm a big fan of this. A lot of people have been asking for formations back properly, sure it's not a lot but hey it's the beginning now it is important to note that yeah it's only pretty much there for you to hold when you're dealing with enemy archers or moving slowly to get to the enemy front line when the enemy does attack you the formation is lost or if you decide to attack an enemy i have been testing for a bit and it does seem that your mass still holds up for the first time that you take a charge at least for a front few units which is pretty cool all in all, I like this. The dwarves are a castle army when it comes to combat and so on. You're not there to charge at the enemy. You're there for them to come to you. They will pepper you sometimes, and obviously you want to be able to protect yourself. This is finally giving you a proper frontline ability. And considering that you can recruit dwarf warriors from the beginning of your campaign, as all you need is your settlement building, you don't actually need to build up a barracks and so on, it's going to make them much more viable. Same thing with the longbeards. So there has been some talk about the flame cannon being nerfed. I think it's more closer to law, it's still doing pretty good damage. I don't see too much of a problem with it, though maybe some MP guys see it a bit differently because competitive play and so on, but yeah, I mean, it synergizes extremely well with every other piece of artillery that the dwarves have, and you have some bigger guns in the form of the Thunder Barge on the way, which I can show you off on Tuesday. But overall, I think that the Flame Cannon is perfectly fine, and yeah, it, I mean, it reminds me exactly of how it used to work on the tabletop, essentially, so I think it's quite good. The Arc of Fire is a little bit lower, but eh, I think it's alright. Here's a really big change. So naturally your gyro bombers have been increased from one to four entities and your gyrocopters have gone from four to 12 entities. Now this is pretty big because first up, you get a lot of shots going out for the same amount of ammunition to the point that the brimstone gun was pretty much able to almost take out a unit of trolls within two or three shots, I think, in one of my live streams. And then obviously you get a lot more bombs because your copters do have bombs naturally. As you've also been able to see, they have Vanguard because there is a tech which improves them to get Vanguard and that is going to be very useful for you as you'll be able to have them on the side or hidden away really from your front line and then have a strafing run. Yes, you can do the whole flight of the Valkyries with just a shitload of copters. If you're dealing against horde armies like Skaven or Greenskins or War and so on, this is going to be perfect for you because you'll be able to move around fairly quickly, get into position, fire, strafe run and drop some bombs too. This is a really good change which makes them absolutely viable as I don't know about you guys but I spent a lot of time playing the dwarves uh, in vanilla prior to this patch and I'll be honest with you I just didn't see much of a reason to use them. They felt just too bleh. 
Now that you can move around and basically destroy whole units if you're lucky with your positioning, you're going to be able to get a hell of a lot of kills. In one of my livestream battles, I believe that my gyro bomber unit, just a singular unit, ended up getting around 350 kills or something, which was fantastic. Very early into campaign, that is obviously going to be very good. I wouldn't say full armies are very viable, and it's a shame that they're not a mount option for engineers. Maybe in the future if people complain enough, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice to see a unit that basically historically got ignored finally getting some attention. As a quick note, I have seen some complaints about Iron Drake straight in the patch with some people saying that they're absolutely horrible. They seem to fix that now. I mean, at least that's what I can see over here. I feel like that's really important to showcase because just because you guys are seeing bugs in early builds doesn't mean that you guys will get those bugs later on because this wasn't on the devlock just yet. Mostly other stuff was. So fixes that can be fixed tend to try to be fixed if possible. I don't know, maybe I'm seeing it differently, but I can see the Iron Drakes performing as well as they normally do. I mean, it, they do a decent amount of damage and they were destroying zombies without too much of a problem. These are my tester units, obviously. Another tech will end up giving hammerers the encourage ability, meaning that they're going to be giving leadership to other troops around the area. This is actually very, very law friendly and it works out really well because this means that you're going to have better leadership overall. Naturally, if there's another factor coming in, like for example, a character who's got a better leadership buff, the better buff will be in place. But if you're one of the types of people who like spreading out your armies quite thinly or having two groups fighting in different forces, yeah, this is actually going to be quite helpful for you. That same tech also will include a buff to your Iron Breakers, so your Iron Breakers will also get an enhanced version of Shield Wall. Again, it'll increase their mass, their missile block chance, and their missile resistance, but also give them ballistic plating. Yep, they can pretty much take cannon fire and not get thrown away. It's pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a battling campaign to showcase that, because as per usual with Total War, when you actually need something to happen, yeah, doesn't happen. For the life of me, I could not find an enemy army with any sort of artillery on the map. But yeah, eventually you're going to have to replace those Dwarf Warriors and probably a good idea to do so with Iron Breakers, right? And the last tech is Iron Veterans, which will give you charge reflection for your great weapon infantry unit. So anything pretty much with like a great axe and so on. Hammers don't count as a great weapon for some reason, I'm not sure why. But yeah, absolutely incredible. Again, if you're waiting to take the charge and you don't need to deal with enemies with loads and loads of artillery or range, why not have some Dwarf Warriors with great weapons at the front and deal with the charges like that? They're pretty good at what they do and I think it's a pretty good change. Honestly, again, it makes you the immovable object. You just have to stay there, take the hit and then hit them back just as hard. They are definitely getting the fantasy of the 8th edition dwarfs really into here with patch 5.0. I think that that's a really good change as, again, it's something that really needs to be implemented more. And not just for the dwarfs, we need to see it for other factions to be able to have some sort of extra stuff. It's nice that the dwarfs have got it, so I'm looking forward to the potential of seeing this happening with other factions in the future. It would be nice to see the Empire, for example, getting a few formations for the Spears and maybe even some detachment mechanic would be cool in the future because it's very obvious we're going to get more Empire DLC. And yeah, it's made me pretty hopeful. Overall, I think 5.0 is being a really good patch for the game. and It's really sorting out some core issues. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I will be live today, by the way, on twitch.tv slash the Great Book of Grudges. Pop by, say hi. There's only going to be one video today as I'm slowing down right before the drop for the DLC stuff on Tuesday so I'm nice and well rested and not overworked. But then you're going to be seeing like five videos a day again so don't you worry. But until then have a nice day guys and I'll see you all again very very soon.